Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Allen Worship Experience. We're so glad that you are here worshiping with us today. If you are joining us online, we want you to hop into the chat room. Let us know where you're watching from, how you're being blessed throughout this worship experience. And if you have any prayer requests, you can put them in the chat room. We have ministers and leaders who are live there to respond to your prayer requests. Listen, at this time, if you're online, jump into the chat room, lift up your praise. If you're here in the room with me, come on, stand to your feet, and let's get ready to go into worship together. It is a good day to give the Lord praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Can we spend a little time praising his name this morning? Oh, he's a good God. His name alone is worthy. When we think about all that you have done for us, Father, we give you praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your goodness and for your mercy. We thank you for this day, for this is the day that you have made. We come to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for another opportunity to stand in this place this morning, to give you praise, to give you honor, realizing, God, that you brought us. You brought us, you kept us, you made ways for us. And we stand in this place to give you glory. We stand with our hands lifted this morning, recognizing that you are still sovereign. You're still in control. Father, you still rule and you reign. And so we simply say, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on your people this morning. Have your way, have your way, have your way. We pray, Lord God, that the enemy be silenced. And Lord God, that our, the praises, oh God, shall rise in this place. Father, we pray that praises will go up, that the blessings may come down today. And it's with Jesus' joy that we clap our hands this morning. And we give you praise. Because we realize you are a good God. Your mercy is everlasting and your truth endure to all generations. We clap our hands and we praise you. Hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands in this presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. If you're excited about the goodness of Jesus, can you lift your hands and open up your mouth and just speak well of him? Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We bless your name. We ask that you have your way this morning. Come on, just scream that out. Say, have your way, Father. Have your way. You're an awesome God. And we bless your name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you came to give God praise, come on, let's sing this song together. Come on. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. And he reigns, our God is, and he reigns, 
Anybody know that the Lord reigns over everything and over all things? We are blessed to know that he's in charge of all things. I put everything in his hand. Anybody ever put everything in his hands or watched him work it out and watched him do it? Because his loving kindness is better than life. We've come to give God praise and give him glory. Come on, stand up on your feet. Come on, let's move around a little bit. Let's go, come on. Come on, y'all sing it with me wherever you are. Let's go. Uh -huh. Oh, God, say. Oh, God, you are my God. Early will I seek your face. Uh -huh. Early will I seek your face. Come on, say my soul. My soul, it thirsts for you. And my flesh. And my flesh. It longs for you. It longs for you. In a dry and thirsty In land. In a dry and thirsty land. Where no water can be found. Where uh -huh. no water can be found. So I've looked for you. So I have looked for in you. In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. To see your power. See your power. All the music. And your glory. Because, come on. Because, because your loving kindness is better. Is better than life. My lips shall praise you. My lips shall praise you. All my life. Let's All go. my life. Thus will. Thus will I bless you. While I live. You. Come on. While Where 
Come on and lift your hands up to the Lord. Worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Indeed, God, we thank you for delivering us. Glory to his name. Come on, I want you to personalize it and begin to think about what the Lord has done for you. Glory to his name. How he saved you, how he delivered you, how he set you free, how he secured you for all of eternity. We ought to give him praise for that. Amen. Come on, we ought never, ought never take the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ for granted. Hallelujah. To those of you that are in person or viewing, we invite you right now to come before the throne of grace of which we've been given access to go to the Father ourselves. What a blessing. Amen. That you don't have to go through anybody else to talk to God. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, we honor you, we love you, we worship you. You are an amazing God, and you do all things well. God, your reputation precedes yourself, oh God. We acknowledge, oh God, that you are Lord of glory and that you are Lord of all. Thank you, Father, for watching over us. Thank you, God, for days provision and enough and for that we give you praise oh God before we fix our mouths or our minds to complain about what we don't have we give thanks unto the Lord for you alone are good and so God even with pain in our body we thank you oh God oh God even oh God with infirmity that's racking our brains father we thank you God even oh God where where we need soothing for joints we give you praise oh God God, we have determined that we will yet praise the Lord. Hallelujah to your name. And so, Father, we lift up to you every prayer concern and every prayer request, oh God, right now. Those things that have been spoken and those things, oh God, that have been hidden in our hearts. Thank you for your word which searches our hearts and, and it divides between soul and spirit. Thank you, oh God, oh God, for knowing what we need even when we can't find the words to say say thank you oh God that you are so true to us and that you are so connected to us oh God that you have already prayed Lord Jesus on our behalf you are already interceding on our behalf and we give you praise for it thank you right now for healing and drying up cancer cells thank you right now for regulating blood pressure in the name of Jesus thank you Lord God we declare oh God that rheumatoid arthritis has to go in the name of Jesus we thank you oh God right now for taking care of organs that have shut down we thank you oh God that you are the same God that created us therefore God we know that fixing us is an easy thing for you so we say have your way on the inside of us God go before us lead us and guide us by your spirit and God we'll be sure to give you all the glory honor and praise in Jesus name we pray come on if you're in agreement tell God thank you and it is so Amen. I really love the Sing that this morning. Come on, somebody say, I really love the Lord. I stop and think about it. Oh, you don't know what you need. Some help to help me 
sing this song this morning.
We have gathered in his name to worship him. So please lift your hands in the sanctuary and open your mouths and express your gratitude. Express, hallelujah, your commitment to him. I really love the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You don't know what he's done for me. Oh, he gave me the victory. Hallelujah. Come on, if you love him today, shout, thank you, Jesus. If you love him today, shout, thank you, Jesus. If you love him today, shout, thank you, Jesus. I really love him. Everybody ought to just shout hallelujah today. Amen. We certainly, we certainly thank God for this opportunity to come into God's house. One more time, we thank God for those of you who have gathered in the sanctuary. And certainly we thank God for those who are viewing us virtually. We just thank God for every opportunity that we get, amen, to lift the name of Jesus. That is who we are, that is what the church has been called to do, amen. Where two or three are gathered, we are gathering to lift the name of Jesus. And certainly we tell you that the power of God and the fire of God often falls Amen, will fall when people of God come together on one accord. Amen, not for form, not for fashion, not out of tradition, but we come together, amen, to lift the name of Jesus and to worship in spirit and in truth. Amen, amen. Thank God for another um, day, and we just want you to know that we continue to do the work of the church in spite of everything, amen. In spite of attacks from without and within, in spite of growing numbers, and, and certainly we know and we believe that God continues to call us to be the church in this hour. And to that end, amen, we want you to know that on tomorrow night at 6 o'clock p.m., young adults, please join um, Reverend Donald Gardner, as he continues with the JGen Bible study, you can stream it on the church Facebook page. And then the men's Bible study will uh, convene on Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. Uh, it is a Zoom uh, Bible study, and so brothers, please check the website for Zoom details. We continue to ask you to join us on Thursdays for our Throwback Thursday services. They have blessed us. They have been just a blessing to watch. And we hope that you check us out. Amen. And if you feel real good about it, just send us an offering. Amen. Because we know that God has brought us from such a mighty, uh, from a mighty long way. And so our Bible study series continues also on Wednesday night uh, at, um, what is the time? I think it's Wednesday night at... 7 at 7, Wednesday night at 7. Uh, we have a plethora of um, speakers that have, you know, agreed to be with us. Uh, and so the, the, uh, the lineup is on the website. But just join us, and we know that you will be blessed. We also want you to know that the men will have their chosen, uh, their chosen men's assembly on Saturday, July 23rd. This week's topic is a legacy of singles and marriage enrichment, amen. Uh, so brothers, please join uh, with our Chosen Men's Assembly on this Saturday, our Chosen Men's Assembly 
on this Saturday. Uh, what time is that? 10 a.m., 10 a.m. Um, <clears throat> please, uh, I, I'm sure that it will be a blessing to your life. Now, we are ready. It is almost here. Worship Conference 2022, <clears throat> July 27th through July 31st. We have a great lineup of preachers on Wednesday night, Pastor John Hanna, on Thursday night, Pastor Marvin Sapp, and then on Friday night, we will enjoy the ministry. We will be blessed by the ministry of Brother Israel Houghton. Uh, that is amazing, and we hope that you will join us. For those of you who are not dancers, the, uh, just know that the worship services are open to all of us. Invite your friends and come out and be a part of this dynamic experience. If you are dancers and if you know people who, who need to be at this experience, who are part of liturgical dance ministries in other churches, uh, please invite them to come because we want this ministry uh, the ministry that God has given us, and certainly we have been trailblazers in liturgical dance, and we just believe that God has given us a gift to be shared with the world, and we pray that uh, we will have a good, good number of dancers from across the country as we continue to do the work that God has called us to do. Precation 2022. August 13th, 9 o'clock a.m., we will convene out there in the parking lot under the tent. Amen. We will have our tent and our guest preachers for that day, our Bishop, Archbishop Robert Rochford and Bishop Courtney Bradley. They have blessed us in the past, and we know that it's going to be great this year. So come. We're not going to be in the sanctuary. We're going to be outside. We're taking prayer to the streets, and we have not prayed together um, I guess since last summer, especially the brothers and the sisters. So please come and be a part of Precation 2022. We promise you, you will be blessed. And we are preparing now for our sneaker giveaway. That's August 27th. If you are in need or know someone who is in need for sneakers, of sneakers or a backpack, please tell them to go to the church website. Um, www.allencathedral.org backslash sneakers and uh, give us the sizes that you need so that we can do that, place that order. God continues to uh, bless us to be a blessing to others and to that end I just want to say it is giving time at the cathedral. We hope that you will give over and above your tithes, your offering for this backpack and sneaker giveaway that we, for which we are preparing. Know that Nike is not giving us sneakers. We are buying sneakers. We have to buy them. So we need you to give and give generously. There is a line on our um, virtual platforms that, al that uh, allows you to give specifically to the book bag and sneaker giveaway. We need you to give. We need you to be generous. We uh, hope that even as we are struggling through increasing uh, gas prices and uh, increasing food prices, that you who have been blessed and are willing to make that sacrifice, which is what we kind of preaching about today, uh, won't you please do that? It, it is incumbent upon us that as we are being blessed, that we remain blessings to others. Amen. Say amen, everybody. Amen. God calls us to do outreach ministry, and that is what we want to do. So uh, we would that you would give. If you're here in the sanctuary and not giving electronically, please hold your gifts, and the offices will collect them at the very end of this service. We thank God every day for blessings. Amen. Uh, tangible blessings, blessings we see and blessings we don't even see. In other words, God is keeping us and watching over us. And when we, even when we don't realize that danger is lurking, God has kept us. And we ought to just give God praise for his keeping power and for his commitment to us. Amen. May the Lord God bless you real good. Hallelujah. We want our worship to flow to you, oh God. 
Let it be pleasing, oh God.
to flow God, we lift our hands in celebration and in thanksgiving. We lift our hands to declare that we surrender our all to you and that we want this worship experience to be one that is pleasing to you. May our worship be a sweet aroma in your nostrils. We ask you to come and be in our midst. Touch us in our broken places. Heal us. Restore us. Deliver us. And Lord God, let us feel the kiss of your never-ending grace and mercy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for another worship experience, and certainly we thank God for God's presence. going to ask you to turn your attention to the Old Testament book of 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel 24, 18 through 25. This is the word of the Lord. On that day, Gad went to David and said to him, go up build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor of Aruna, the Jebusite. So David went up as the Lord had commanded through Gad. When Aruna looked and saw the king and his officials coming toward him, he went out and bowed down to the king with his face to the ground. Aruna said, why has my Lord the king come to his servant? To buy your threshing floor, David answered, so I can build an altar to the Lord that the plague on the people may be stopped. Aruna said to David, let my Lord, the king, take whatever he wishes and offer it up. Here are oxen for the burnt offering and here are the threshing sledges and ox yokes for the wood. Your, your, your majesty, Aruna gives all of this to the king. Aruna also said to him, may the Lord your God accept you. But the king replied to Aruna, no, I insist on paying for it. I will not sacrifice to the Lord my God burnt offerings that cost me nothing. So David brought, he bought the threshing floor, sacrificed burnt offerings. Uh, wait a minute, he bought the threshing floor and the oxen and paid 50 shekels of silver for them. David built an altar to the Lord there and sacrificed burnt offerings and fellowship offerings. Then the Lord answered his prayer in behalf of the land and the plague was stopped. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. As we preach to you from the sermon topic today, the power of real sacrifice. Church, it has been said that sacrifice is actually the road to significance. Those who have lived meaningful lives, those who have made 
noteworthy contributions to the lives of others or to the church of the true and living God are those who have given, those who have sacrificed their time, their resources, and their talents for the benefit of others and to the glory of God. The older I get, the more compelled uh, I am to understand that greatness is never born out of selfishness, but rather greatness is the result of someone looking beyond self, looking beyond the present, and seeing a bigger picture. One of the most soul-stirring things that we can do is to look back over our own lives and see how personal sacrifices and even the sacrifices of others, the sacrifices of your parents or your teacher or even a, a, a coworker, we can see how sacrifices have yielded great rewards and benefits. You can say amen. To become who you need to become, who you were born to become, it often means that you have to sacrifice. For you see, the road to newness, the road to greater, is not always an easy road to travel. It means that we have to expand our boundaries by giving up convenience. We have to expand our boundaries by giving up ease and comfort. Because you see, success costs. It stresses you out, it stresses us out sometimes, but we can be certain that the fruit that sacrifice produces is beneficial, is life-changing, is life-giving. And if we want to be who God has called us to be, we have to be willing to sacrifice. You see, most of the successful people that we know those who have gone farther than they, uh, you would have expected them to go, the, those who have done great things, are people who, had been, who were willing to make necessary and meaningful sacrifices. Now, the notion of sacrifice is not desirable to a whole lot of folk, because you see, sacrifice often means delayed gratification. And we live in a time when people want what they want and they want it instantly, but, but there are some things that you be delayed, you will be inconvenienced, and you will have to deny self. Everybody can say amen. Sacrifice means giving up something of value, something of importance to experience something even more important and more valuable in the future. To sacrifice is to surrender your security, to surrender your comfort, and to, to surrender normalcy uh, so that you can reach the places that you want to go. So we know that if you want to run a relay or drop a few pounds, you have to invest, you have to sacrifice, amen? You have to invest sweat and energy and, 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 and you have to work out. You have to put something in it. You have to, re to eat the right foods by eliminating uh, those foods that prove to be unhealthy and toxic to the body. You have to sacrifice, right? If you want to build a business, you have to invest your savings. You have to put in long, unpaid hours of hard work. You have to reinvest in that business, and you have to resist the inclination to spend up all the profits. Say amen, everybody. So to become a doctor or an attorney or an engineer, one has to study hard, lose a lot of sleep, and find a whole lot of money to pay for the promised bright future. Likewise, to become a good, productive Christian, we must all embrace the call to sacrifice. In this life, your willingness to sacrifice directly or indirectly determines your level of success. 
Someone said that if you want to live an exceptional, extraordinary life, you may have to give up many of the things that have been a part of a normal life. In other words, you only get out of life what you put into it. And if you put little in it, you will reap little. But if you sacrifice much, you will reap much. Somebody ought to say amen. So when we think about when we think about it, there are many uncommitted and barely committed Christians who have not embraced this notion of sacrifice, who put in very little, but they make no bones about wanting and needing much from God and much from the church. They barely pray, they barely read the word, they barely fast, they barely come to church. And though they sacrifice little, they want a totally committed God and a totally accessible church. Some of our biggest crit critics are those people who give very little to the church in terms of time, talent, and resources. They make demands on God, they make demands on the church, but they are never present to help carry out some, the business of the church. Say amen, everybody. When it comes to sacrifice and surrender and availability, they are absent, but they cannot understand why uh, sacrifice, and they cannot understand why sacrifice has to be a part of the Christian journey. But can we forget, we cannot forget, that Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him or her deny themselves to take up his cross, take up her cross, and follow me. For whoever would save his life would lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake and the sake of the gospel will save it. In other words, I know you may not want to hear this, but to be Christian is to be willing to sacrifice. To be Christian is to be willing to embrace the cross and all of the cross and all that the cross demands so that we can authentically walk with God. When we see the cross, and many of us wear crosses, we forget that the cross is not a piece of jewelry, but a cross, the cross is the symbol of God's sacrifice, of Jesus' sacrifice for humanity. And it is also a call to us when we wear the cross. It is really our statement that says, I am willing to sacrifice what I need to sacrifice to become who God wants me to be. Oh, you ought to put your hands together and thank God, hallelujah, that God is calling us to greater. One of the things that we can never forget is that as believers, we are not called just to be religious. You know, and what I mean, what we mean by just be religious, just saying that I'm a Christian and coming to church and, and, and singing in the choir, serving in the food kitchen. No, to be Christian is to enter into a process of building a relationship with Jesus. Amen. Our relationship with Jesus should grow deeper and more intense every day. And one of the essential ingredients for a healthy relationship with Christ and a healthy spirituality is the notion of sacrifice. We have to sacrifice old ways. We have to sacrifice sometimes some of the things that brought us pleasure if they are not according to the will of God. Just as marriage is about sacrifice, can I get a witness? I said marriage is about, parenting is about sacrifice, amen. To build a relationship with a spouse, to build a relationship and to raise children, it, is a, it requires sacrifice. To be in friendships, 
require sacrifice. We must understand then that we who are in relationship with Jesus must be willing to sacrifice. Saying yes to the Lord even when we don't want to. So when we sacrifice, we sacrifice time. Amen. We are all called to sacrifice our time for the sake of of building our relationship with Jesus. We have to sacrifice, we have to spend time in prayer. Everybody say amen. We have to spend time in prayer. We have to spend time in learning, in studying the word. You cannot build a relationship with Christ until you get to know him. As you, The more you get to know him, the more intense your relationship becomes. So we sacrifice time for prayer. We sacrifice time for learning, and we sacrifice time for service. Everybody say service. The man or the woman who knows who holds the future will always find time, Lord have mercy, to grow in God and to grow in God on God's terms, to, uh, uh, to, to be willing to give of yourself Time with God encourages us, amen, to live productively. And that is a sacrifice worth making. And so to say that you are a Christian and never spend time in prayer, never spend time in study, never spend time in service, just know today that God is calling you to a higher level of involvement and a higher level of, 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 of uh, uh, sacrifice so that your life can become more like the life that he has called you to live. We, we sacrifice time and we also sacrifice sacrifice somebody say convenience that means we make a special effort to be who we need to be sacrifice getting up early sometime giving more than you intended to give in terms of service being willing to work harder and making yourself better uh, for yourself for your family and for the people of god we cannot find intimacy with god without extending ourselves beyond what the world offers we sometimes have to sacrifice convenience and comfort that is a great act of faith because when we sacrifice a uh, convenience and when we understand that we cannot always have our way and it's not always convenient amen uh, for us to be in the service of God don't you know that that level of sacrifice will catapult us into new realms of creative living the change that we need to make in life is not happenstance but it requires a sacrifice of convenience it requires a revolution of the soul that comes with giving up sometimes what feels good in order to become someone new we sacrifice self uh, what did the uh, 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 what did Paul say we present our bodies as living sacrifices holy and acceptable and pleasing to God we love God and thus we are willing to work to be more like Christ it's convenient amen to be mean sometimes but because I love God I'm going to work at being sweet amen uh, it's convenient to tell people off but sometimes uh, we give up that convenience and, and, and we work on bridling our tongue uh, because we know that that is the sacrifice that we need to make to please God Sacrifice. <laughs> that means we do not repay evil for evil. Sacrifice means that we do not seek revenge or retaliation. Sacrifice means we 
do not use our tongue to cut people down, but we use our tongue to build people up. We use our tongue as instruments of praise. We, we sacrifice convenience. We, we work to forgive. It's more convenient to carry a grudge than it is to release someone from our anger and from our unforgiveness. But we work to do it. We offer our minds and our emotions and our attitudes up to God as a sacrifice that we are willing to make to walk with the Lord. And yes, sometimes as I hurry on, we sacrifice popularity. See, when you begin to walk with the Lord, we have to put God first. And we must walk boldly in our love for God. Because life with God often puts us at odds with culture. Life with God often puts us at odds with society and their way of doing things. Life with God puts us, as, uh, puts us uh, at odds with community and the roles that people seek to give us. But when you uh, are seeking righteousness, often will, uh, others will often be offended by who you are becoming. And they will try to make you change your mind about Christ. They will try to shame you about trying to grow and become better. Oh, but you need to declare, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am not ashamed of my relationship with him. I am not ashamed of letting you know that I'm trying to live better and leave some of my past behind. And I am not impressed with your trying to take me off in the wrong direction. We sacrifice popularity. Folk won't like you. They may shun you. Oh, that's why you need to pray that God will send you some friends who will encourage you. And if you can't find anybody to encourage you, encourage yourself. Understanding that there's too much at stake for me to be a people pleaser. We also have to sacrifice. We sacrifice popularity. We sacrifice convenience. We sacrifice time. But we sacrifice in our worship. This is one of the messages that comes from the text that we read this morning, this afternoon. Now we all know David well-known and much, much honored king, and he has been blessed through the years with unmerited favor. Now, if you look closely at that text, God had instructed David to approach a Jebusite by the name of Aruna to get land to build an altar. Now understand that this needed to happen because David had disobeyed God. Even the best servants disobey God. By not do, he disobeyed God by not doing what God told him to do. And his disobedience had brought pestilence on the land. So David prayed to God to alleviate the suffering of his people and allow him to suffer the consequences for his own sin. And so a good and merciful God was giving David another chance. We just ought to thank God for another chance. Hallelujah. Thank God that God does not throw us away, but our God always gives us another chance. And so through the prophet Gad, God spoke to David and told him to go purchase land to build an altar to the Lord. And so anxious to obey God this time, David approaches Aruna and offered to buy his threshing floor to build an altar to the Lord. And when the king approached Aruna uh, to buy his land, uh, this man was so honored, Aruna was so honored that, that, that he would come to him. He was so honored to be in the presence of the whole king of Israel that he said, no king, you don't have to buy. I will give you the land. I will give you the animals. I will give you the wood. 
to offer sacrifices unto the Lord. But look closely. David refused the gift. And this is what he said. I will not give offerings uh, unto the Lord that cost me nothing. I want to make the appropriate sacrifice because sacrifice is my act of worship. David could have gotten the land at no cost, but David was adamant that his offering to God had to be costly to him. He needed to make a sacrifice to give God his very best. Now look, many of us would have jumped at the opportunity to get something for nothing. But David's response reminds us that we cannot allow cheapness or convenience to shape our relationship relationship with God. We need to understand, church, that greed and attachment to, to material things usurps our devotion to God. Some of us are depriving ourselves of favor, manifold blessings, and abundant living simply because we have, for whatever reason, sacrificed little and given very little back to the God who has blessed us. Now, may I just stop here and talk about the reality that I mentioned this morning. Many uh, social media has been a, a, a buzzing because a certain evangel televangelist has declared that tithing is not uh, acceptable or tithing is not required for the New Testament Christian. Now, I'm not going to argue that point, but what I will argue is this. The more you give, the more he gives to you. The more he gives, the more he gives to you. And is there anybody in here that does not want a blessing from God? Now, we are quick in the church to look for ways around giving back to God. But we want God to bless us with health and with strength and with resources. But we are all, so many are determined to look for ways to give less instead of looking for ways to give more. I said it earlier and I'll say it as long as there's breath in my body. God has been too good to me for me to look for ways to decrease my giving. I'm looking for ways to increase. I give and I give out of gratitude. I give in obedience and I give with the understanding that I am called to sacrifice for God because God has sacrificed for me. Now I ain't trying to shame nobody. I just want you to know if you want more, you give more. And we would be, Lord have mercy, remiss to be those who are always asking God, give me, give me, give me, but are looking for ways not to give back to God and God's church. Look for ways to give more instead of looking for ways to give less. We must understand that giving an offering to God is an act of worship. And we don't want to be those who are guilty of ritualistic and perfunctory, perfunctory worship as we uh, uh, understand that when it comes to worshiping God, there is no way that we should hold back. But we cannot be, the, uh, we cannot be those who are cheap. We cannot be those who are stingy. But we must be those who make sure that our lives express gratitude and real commitment to God. And I just wonder if there's anybody in here with me today or anybody who is viewing 
that will just put your hands together and thank God for every blessing and declare, I am willing to make this sacrifice. I'm willing to do what God has called me to do because you see God has been my rear guard and God has been my front guard his hand of protection has been on me all the days of my life is there anybody who will worship the Lord today because the Lord has been your divine provider praise God from whom all blessings flow praise God all creatures here below or is there anybody who will shout with me today because the Lord God has been the arranger of the affairs of your life. You know that you wouldn't be where you are today had the Lord not blessed you and that's why I can declare that I will give of my best to the master. I will offer him uh, uh, the sacrifice of praise. I will offer him uh, the sacrifice of time for the Lord has sustained me. The Lord has loved me. The Lord has looked beyond my faults and he has seen my need. And the Lord is declaring today, I the Lord your God am a jealous God. You shall have no other gods before me. So we are those who declare today that I am giving myself totally and fully unto the Lord. I I will sacrifice and I will give and I'm gonna give up some stuff you need to give up your idols give up the crystals give up astrology give up this new age thinking give up superstitious practices and declare there is but one God and that's the God that I serve hallelujah I serve him in the morning and I serve him at noonday. I give myself to God because I know that God watches over me and I declare today that he can have my body, he can have my mind, he can have my problems, he can have my grief, he can have my pain, he can have my joy. In other words, he can have all of me. I need Jesus, I need Jesus. And because I need Jesus, I'm going to give all that I am to Jesus. I believe, church, in this hour that there are some folk under the sound of my voice who are willing to say yes to the Lord. In fact, somebody, you need to jump up on your feet and give the Lord a yes, Lord, praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. I walk right. Yes, Lord. I want to live right. Yes, Lord. I want to be saved. Yes, Lord. I want to be whole. Yes, Lord. I sacrifice what I need to sacrifice. Yes, Lord. I'll give you first place in my heart hallelujah i want to have a passion for god i want to show my love for god hallelujah if there's no cost there's no sacrifice and the thing that you need to remember even as we look at the cross that is the symbol uh, of our faith uh, every time uh, you look at the cross uh, you need to remember that jesus sacrificed his life that you and i might escape the penalty of sin and enjoy the joy of salvation everybody are to give God praise because Jesus came that we might have life I will not offer unto God anything that costs me nothing
Jesus gave himself as the ultimate sacrifice for humanity. And he calls us, my brothers and sisters, not to get caught up in the, the mores of the world, the ways of the world, believing that the world owes you, but you owe nothing. We all owe our lives. We all owe our service. Yes, we all owe our worship. We all owe our resources. For God is good. God has sacrificed. God has done so much. And so let us not miss out on the blessings that could come because we have decided that we owe nothing. We owe, we owe it all to God. We owe all that we are. And while we will never be perfect, we understand that we express our love for God by giving back by giving back to others. And it's not always just about money, though certainly our resources come under that rubric, but we give back ourselves. We learn to love unlovable people. We walk away from some fights. We walk away from destructive behavior because we owe God our very best. We give up some things because we see that they're depleting us, depleting us. Ask God to purge us and cleanse us because the call that God has on our life is a call to become better and to become stronger and to become wiser and to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I, so glad they played this song. We give you, we give you God. We give you all a sacrifice. This is my act of worship. I present my body, my mind as a living sacrifice. This is how I worship you, not just by lifting my hands, but putting my life in your hands. I will not offer unto God a haphazard praise, but rather, Lord God, I want to give you the best of who I am. Come on, let's sing that together. We give you all the glory. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my children. I trust you with my resources. I trust you with my time. I trust you to cleanse me. But one of the things that I have observed during this pandemic is that there have been so many who have gotten to the place 
that they are giving God the bare minimum. Now, it doesn't mean that they're not sending in their gifts. Many of them are, but when it comes to time and when it comes to intentionality, intentionality of worship and study, they are giving God leftovers. But understand this, we in this season cannot be those who participate in left, giving God our leftovers. Cheap worship, just doing enough to get by. Half-hearted participation, no participation, not giving God the best of who we are. But understand this, our worship, our lives, must cost us something as it relates to sacrificing for God. We honor the Lord by giving God the first fruit of our time. We honor God by giving God the first fruit of our worship, the first fruit of our resources, the first fruit of our determination to be available to Him. So lift your hands one more time. We're going to end with this song. We give you all the glory. to God even as we give our all to the Lord at this time we want to open the doors of the church and invite each each of you to give your life to the Lordship of Jesus Christ so as the ministers are coming hallelujah if you've never given your life to the Lordship of Jesus then we invite you right now we don't want you to wait another second another minute come on come running to this altar Hallelujah to Jesus. If you would like to unite and join our church family, we welcome you to come to be a part of a wonderful, wonderful family of God. Listen, we are not perfect, but we are being perfected by the Holy Spirit each and every day. And so won't you come and grow with us? Amen. Come on, wherever you are, we invite you to come right now. Hallelujah. Maybe you've already given your life to the Lord, but yet you know that you are not fulfilling all that God would have for you to fulfill. You're saying, I need to recommit my life to serving the Lord in spirit and truth. For some of you, God has been dealing with you already. He's been dealing with you at night. He's been dealing with you even throughout the day. Listen, come on, respond to the call of God. Uh, the more you fight off, when God is trying to speak to you, the harder it becomes to hear from him. But when you respond to the voice of the Lord, I promise you, you will continue to hear him clearly. Come on, wherever you are. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. Come on, the altar is open just for you. We welcome you. Don't allow this moment to pass you by without giving the Lord all of you today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, even after the final blessing has been given, we want you to know it's not too late. We'll receive you. If you come to the chapel, I promise you, we'll lead you in your next steps with Jesus Christ. Come on, let's go before the Lord, everyone, in prayer as we seal this moment. Father, we thank you. We honor you for your grace, for your mercy, for your peace. Thank you, God, for your tremendous sacrifice in the person of Jesus Christ. You gave your very best so that we might be able to enjoy the very best that you have to offer. God, we thank you. Thank you, God, for taking upon yourself 
all of our sins and our grief. Thank you, oh God, for giving us new life and giving us life more abundantly. It's in Jesus' name that we pray and we ask it all. Come on, everyone, say amen. Hallelujah. Tell God, thank you. Thank you, God, for giving us your very best gift. COVID testing is held Sundays until 4 p.m., Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Thursdays from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Tune in this Thursday for another Throwback Thursday broadcast. Join us virtually at 8.45 p.m. for a look back at some of your favorite moments from the Allen Worship Experience. Stream on our Facebook page, YouTube page, and church app. JGen Bible Study for Young Adults is held on Mondays at 6 p.m. Stream live on our Facebook page. Men's Bible Study is held on Thursdays at 7 p.m. on Zoom. Visit the website for more details. Tune in for a new Bible study series entitled, Let All the People Praise You, O God. Wednesdays at 7 p.m. now through August 17th. Stream online on our website at allencathedral.org. Join us for Chosen Men's Assembly Saturday, July 23rd at 10 a.m. on Zoom. The topic of discussion will be singles and marriage enrichment. Visit our website for more details. Registration is open for our backpack and sneaker giveaway. Save the date for our giveaway and fun day, August 27th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. This year, we are also partnering with Major League Baseball to host a free play ball event for children ages 12 and under. You can register online. Please note that registration to receive sneakers, backpacks, and participate in the play ball event is separate. Save the date for Praycation, Saturday, August 13th at 9 o'clock a.m. with Bishop Courtney Bradley and Archbishop Robert Rochford. us July 27th through the 31st for Worship Conference 2022. Guest speakers include Pastor John Hanna, Pastor Marvin Sapp, and Bishop Jason Nelson. We will also have one night of worship with special guest Israel Houghton. Register online at gacworshipconference.org. For more information regarding our virtual hybrid and on-site events, please visit our website at www.allencathedral.org. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We invite you to stay connected with us on our website at allencathedral.org and across our social platforms, including our YouTube channel, Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. Listen to our daily prayers, watch Bible studies, see featured videos, give tithes and offerings, and more on our mobile app, which you can download from iTunes or Google Play. Subscribe to receive our weekly digital event calendar and text alerts by visiting our website at allencathedral.org and follow the prompts to subscribe. You are invited to join us on our live audio prayer line weeknights 8 p.m. to 8.20 p.m. and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. The dial-in details are available on our website. Again, we are so grateful for the opportunity to worship with you today. Our church continues to slowly open its doors, keeping your health and safety in mind. Remember, you are the church. To God be the glory. Have a blessed day.